Hi all. I've opened my window so you can hear the birds tweeting quite loudly in the background. Hope you don't mind that as a little background music for this video from nature. So this is a Paul Morphy game in a chestnut shell. It was against Charles Le Carpentier. And this is Charles the Carpentier's only game in the Chess Gamescom database. Played in New Orleans, 1849. Paul Morphy had just turned 12 that year, I believe. Paul Morphy born <coughs> June 22nd of 1837. So he's about 12 years old. And you'll notice the rook is missing. Yeah, this is a rook odds game. Quite spectacular odds here. So what is Morphy going to do? He plays e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 and he plays now d4 so he's aware of opening up lines wanting to get a very tactical position where his pieces his remaining pieces can be dangerous after takes he doesn't play the scot chain but actually plays a move which uh is basically there's, there's no live book for this position, by the way, because <laughs> the rook's missing. Can I just remind you, the rook's missing. It's it's not a live book position, <laughs> funny enough. So, but in the Scotch game, knight takes d4. Here, bishop c4 is played, you know, if, if white did have the rook. Uh, check. We have c3, takes, and black's winning even more material. And black gets even more greedy. But he is improving white's bishops here. They look quite dangerous. Especially compared to black bishops, the quality difference is there visually. The engines don't really appreciate that. They just say black's minus five here. This bishop's humbly retreating now on f8. It might be a tactical target there on b4, like for example this, hitting b4. e5. Now black, with his king in the center, he's kind of said he's going to leave it in the center a bit longer with this bishop retreat because castling seems a longer way off. And already it seems as though with a bishop on f8, a natural move like knight g e7 might be a little bit dangerous. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, already knight g5, and white is not entirely uh, without uh, assets here. It's it's less than five. It's still less than two. It's still in black's advantage. But I don't really want to analyze that. I want to analyze the game continuation. So d6 for the moment. Uh, but let's just say there are safer moves than d6 because this e file is an open road to black's king. Say b6, queen d5, black could play queen e7 and try and castle queenside as an example of a safer route of play. It doesn't have to aim to castle kingside. But we see this d6, rook e1. Now, after d takes e5, this is a mistake. Uh, this move. The funny thing is, even though whites are rooked down, there's a way for whites, from a technical perspective, independent of black, the strength of black's replies, for white to force an advantage here. Now, the 12 year old Morphy didn't play the most accurate move, and it just so happens that you know the engine most accurate move is actually already an advantage for white that's to me quite shocking given the rook odds but there's a move here i wonder if you can spot it which actually concretely gives white an advantage independent of any further any best defense if i give you five seconds okay bishop takes f7 remarkably to me at least gives white a forced advantage. This wasn't played, knight takes e5 was played. I want to just show you this now. If takes, then knight takes e5 check, and this is lethal. If takes, we take the queen, and that's an advantage to white. And if the king uh, moves, uh, well, it's it's going into horrible discovered attack this bishop's there for that you know it's or this rook it's not worth thinking about that's just horrible and it'd be winning the queen after if the king went to e8 so basically after bishop takes f7 check if we now imagine king e7 it's funny that in this position you know with the rook odds white is actually doing very very well with the move queen b3 which avoids the exchange of queens threatens bishop takes g8 as well as knight takes e5 
and black is is losing this position basically say uh, Queen d7 we we'll just take that Knight say Knight f6 to protect that Knight Knight takes e5 is just too dangerous for black's King the Queen supporting the Bishop this is far too dangerous you know black's King is gonna get mated by force this is just a forced mate sequence for example so it's funny that actually in this game even despite the rook odds bishop takes f7 check here against best defense is a big advantage to white but in the game we have knight takes e5 which relies on black to make a mistake uh, later on after queen takes d1 we have bishop takes f7 and black should play king d8 here and black will be better here if king d8 for example if takes king e7 this position you know black's just better uh, but um, okay so basically king d8 sorry after here in this position king d8 is the way to play even though it seems to be a bit counterintuitive to give the opponent the option to play a check here um well a direct check you might think that's counterintuitive anyway uh, yeah i mean this is harmless as well basically after king e7 you know black's just better uh, but in the game funny enough black played king e7 probably expecting the 12 year old to just take the queen and then it'll be fine for black if the queen's taken uh let's let's have a look i think black just basically just takes on e5 so the bishop's then hanging so if bishop takes we just take on f7 and if bishop takes g8 Black's best might be to damage the pawns first, then take on g8, and Black's just just winning. So that was probably the expectation, just to routinely take the queen. Uh, now Morphy is on the verge of technically equalising with his next move against Black's best play. Knight g6 is actually played instead. A discovered double check. Now Black still has a chance. To be slightly better here even at this moment uh, if black plays king d7 then this position even losing the rook here this is slightly better for black but black in the game may be shocked at uh, this double uh, discover check plays more routinely just to take material maybe first instinct king takes f7 and can you guess what white plays here if i give you five seconds starting from now <laughs> uh, okay actually it so happens that knight takes h8 is checkmate it so happens that all the escape squares have been taken away the frog has been boiled here of black's king being the frog he wasn't aware of the temperature change the bishop was covering the f6 escape square the rook was covering these three escape squares and the knight with check is also covering the g6 escape square so sometimes uh if you see this game and you just play through it without the comments you don't see what people really saw in it uh, but some people say you know they've never seen this type of checkmate before and it, it is true to end the game with knight takes h8 check is a very very unusual checkmate that's for one for two paul morphy was only 12 years old for three it was a rook uh, odds game paul morphy knew how to customize his play to the particular context he was in We've all got to customize our play, like for online chess or long game chess or bullet chess. He's really customized his play. It so happens here that even this context, it seems after the, it's the staggering for me, for me is the awakening that actually White was actually technically better without him to rely on any trap in this game. In any case, the way he played it, yeah, 
black could have had a smaller advantage but there was a way of white getting a big advantage by force after that d takes e5 earlier so it's remarkable to analyze these games and i urge you to check out the comments around these games to get a better appreciation because otherwise you think well you know what is this it's it's a game you know blunders no look, look at the games in in context to get empathy for them and check out the comments so it is quite a remarkable game for a 12 year old back in 1849 to play with rook odds i hope you enjoyed it and the final chat mate comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much